Hey, what's up guys? Matt Cage here and welcome to another countdown video. Today we are going to be counting down the top 5 updates that didn't pass pull in old school RuneScape. Before I begin, please note that there is already a part 1 to this video which covered all pulls between the game's release on February 22nd of 2013 to June 6th of 2016. Therefore, this video will cover all pulls from June 6th of 2016 until today. I am not including any past pulls that failed in my first video on this one. I do however want to say that the PvP armors, which include best Statuses, Morgans, and Zuriels failed yet another pull. As I mentioned in the last video, the pull was conducted for the armor pieces only. The weapons were not pulled because they are simply just too overpowered, and Jagex is trying to prevent fast power creep into the game. They stated that the only way they can make these items possible is with a complete overhaul of the weapons, which would take quite a bit of time. The Divine Spirit Shield also failed another pull during this time frame as well. Finally, although some of these updates on the list I'm about to share do exhibit small power creep, I feel that these updates would have been nice additions to the game for the reasons that I will outline in the video. I hope you enjoy. Starting off the countdown at number 5 are two items that were proposed to come out with Revenants in the Wilderness Rejuvenation number 2 pull on November 2nd, 2017. These two items were the Amulet of Peril and the Revenant Vambrises. The Amulet of Peril, as described in the dev blog, had the ability to increase your strength bonus based on how low your active hit points were while in PvP combat only. This amulet wouldn't stack with Darok. The dev blog stated this, we're expecting the amulet to have similar strength level to that of the power amulet when uncharged and when fully charged offering slightly more bonus to that of the torture amulet. Charges would be obtained while in PvP combat. I like this proposed update because the amulet would be available to peers, which would potentially allow for more low HP risks when fighting. The second item, the Revenant Vambrises, which wasn't a set name for the item by the way, was an item that was also to be exclusively dropped by the Revenants found within the Revenant Caves. These gloves were aimed at ranged combat and it would be best in slot, offering slightly higher ranged attack bonus than that of the Borrow Gloves. The poll explained that the Borrow Gloves have been the all-around best gloves for all scenarios when using both melee and ranged, and Jagex was looking to change that. The gloves would require 40 defense and 70 range to wear. These gloves were pretty balanced, providing lower defensive and melee strength bonus to that of the borrow gloves, however the argument with most players was that the range damage per second or DPS was already high enough and these gloves would only increase it further. Jagex's rebuttal to this was the DPS would only slightly rise. After these failed to pull, Jagex has been working hard to implement them as a reward into raids 2 and the player base will be voting on those rewards in the next few weeks. Coming in at number 4 was a pretty big player vs player update in my opinion, as it would have made the normal spellbook much more viable. For context, I don't BK, so this really didn't have any impact on me, but I think it would have made BKing more interesting in old school runescape. In content poll number 54, which was released on July 7th of 2017, Jagex asked a series of questions that related to the binding spells. One of the questions read as follows. Should a new binding spell, Shackle, be added to the normal spellbook? It would require level 92 magic and each cast would require 5 nature runes, 6 earth runes, and 6 water runes. It will bind players to the spot for 20 seconds, which is equal to the duration of being frozen by Ice Barrage. I thought that this would have been a great update to the game because it would have made PKing on the normal spellbook more balanced to that of the ancient magic spellbooks. Currently, a player can use the Tally Block spell on the normal spellbook and then switch to the ancient magic spellbook via Magic Cape to Barrage. Since this is the case, I'm not entirely sure why a player can't Tally Block and then use Shackle before using other means of killing their opponent, such as other magic spells on the normal spellbook or even range or melee. Either way, the pull failed with only 66.2% voting yes, and for that reason, Shackle doesn't remain in the game as of today. At number 3 on our countdown of the top 5 updates to never pass a pull in old school runescape is the loot key scroll. Similar to number 5, the loot key scroll was a reward that was originally pulled in the wilderness rejuvenation number 2 pull on November 2nd, 2017. The loot key scroll was a proposed tradable item that would be dropped by the revenant NPCs found within the revenant caves. It could be redeemed at Crystallia, the Edgefield Witch, which would give players the ability to toggle on and off loot keys. For those of you who aren't familiar with loot keys, then you probably 
probably haven't played dead man mode in dead man mode when a player gets a kill a loot key would be dropped the loot key first represented the most valuable 28 spaces in a person's bank but that was eventually lowered to 10. anyways the loot key is an extremely nice feature as it only takes up one inventory spot when pking loot key gives a player the option to continue pking with more supplies on hand of course to keep things interesting a player would have no idea how much their loot key was actually worth aka how much they pked until they actually got to a bank and cashed that key in similar to dead man mode players who unlock the ability to pk loot keys could hold up to a maximum of five keys however if a player did get a six kill and looted it their least valuable key would vanish for the new key although i thought this would be a great update to old school runescape it didn't hit the 75 percent margin to pass a pull this was actually pulled two separate times my guess as to why this pull question didn't pass either time was because players simply wanted to keep bank keys synonymous with dead man mode in content poll number 51, Jagex pulled two questions that would have tremendously helped all three major aspects of the game, PvP, PvM, and even some types of scaling. The first question Jagex asked was this, should it be possible to change the order of the prayer icons in the prayer book? Currently, as you probably know, the icons are arranged by prayer level. If this poll were to pass, it would allow RuneScape players to change the order of their prayer spellbooks based upon different scenarios in game. For example, it would have allowed PvMers to change the order of their prayer books based upon on their current boss fight. When I go to Kriara, I use the Protect from Range, Steel Skin, and Eagle Eye Prayers. Unfortunately, those are not conveniently in a row for me, this update would have allowed them to be. Although I don't PK, if this pull would have passed, it would have had a substantial effect on PKing. It would allow PKers to align their prayer books according to their preferences. For example, it could allow a peer to put Smite next to Eagle Eye or Incredible Reflexes in Ultimate Strength. It could allow high-level Tripod PKers to put Augury, Rigor, and Piety near overhead spells to make clicking easier. The second question, similar to the first question, involved changing the order of spell icons in the spellbook. Although this definitely caters to PvP the most, I still like the update nonetheless. For example, it would have allowed players such as peers to arrange spellbooks to have things like Teleblock, God Spells, Entangle, and Charge right next to each other. It also could have allowed skillers to change the order of their spellbooks to make them view closer to the left part of their spellbook. Even general players could have benefited, as this update would have allowed them to arrange similar spells to be near each other, such as Teleportation fine spells, curses, enchantment spells, and alchemy spells. Unfortunately, this was a near-miss pull. Okay, so now it's time for the honorable mentions. And I must say that if any of these so far are my top 5 updates to not pass video are biased, it is definitely this one. In content poll number 49, a question was pulled that asked, should a total level requirement of 2200 be added to two worlds? The question wasn't even close to passing. There are two reasons why I wanted to see 2200 total level worlds. The first reason is that 2000 total level worlds are absolutely garbage. When I say they are garbage, I truly mean it. They lag like crazy, you miss ticks, and most of the players who have 2000 total level requirement don't even use them because the lag is so frustrating. Jagex has looked into them, and Mod Ash has stated in multiple tweets that there is no issue with the worlds from their tasks and final reports, which basically means that we are in a stalemate of ever getting these worlds fixed. The second reason that I wanted to see a 2200 total level world is because too many people have access to the 2k total level worlds today. At the time of this recording, over 30,000 people have 2k plus total level which basically doesn't give any merit or credibility to log into these worlds anymore. On the contrary, 2,200 total level worlds would allow less than 6,000 players to have access to them. It would be an extremely satisfying feeling to the people who made it into these worlds. It would also give the players who can't log into the world something to strive for. Until 2,200 total level worlds come into the game, come hang out with me in World 378 lads, or even just in my CC, Mac underscore H. So now that I've provided a biased honorable mention, I'm also going to provide a non-biased one. In content poll number 56, a quality of life poll, a simple yet effective question was asked. The question asked, should an additional option be added to the ring of dueling, which would teleport you closer to the lobby of the duel arena? The existing teleport to the entrance would remain. I don't stake, but I do see how convenient this would be for stakers who are trying to get closer to the dueling spots. I just don't see how this poll didn't pass. It did no harm to the game, it just allowed players to save a minute or so of running. 
coming in at number 1 on our countdown of Old School RuneScape's Top 5 Updates to Not Pass a Pull Part 2 is Elder Armor, Twisted Armor, and Kodai Ropes. Elder, Twisted, and Kodai would be the new best in slot armor pieces for melee, range, and magic respectfully. On September 8th of 2016, in content poll number 47 titled Rewards for Raids and Slayer, the armors were pulled for the first time. Question number 1 read as follows. Should Elder Armor, Twisted Armor, and Kodai Ropes be added to Old School RuneScape as a reward from raids? At the time of this first pull, the armor stats were as follows. Twisted Armor had a plus 5 higher ranged attack bonus for the chest plate slot and the chain skirt slot, the armadillo, and a few ranged strength bonuses as well. Kodai had a plus 4 higher magic attack bonus than the 3rd Age Mage hat, and plus 8 higher magic attack bonus than Arum's rope top and rope skirt. Remember, Ancestral wasn't out at this time. Finally, Elder Armor had higher attack bonuses, defense bonuses, and strength bonuses than both Torag and Bandos, but with the lower magic defense bonus. The pull ended up failing after the armor failed to pull, some tweaks were made to the armor. The magic defense bonus for the elder armor was buffed at a cost of removing some of the strength bonus to be parallel to Bandos. The Kodai robes increased to a 75 magic and defense requirement, and the twisted armor increased the attack bonus for the helm by plus 5. With these changes, Jagex hoped this would give the armor the changes it needed to pass. One month later, on October 7, 2016, the armors were pulled a second time. The pull did worse than the first one, the changes had backfired as the yes percentage went down by 8.5% from the previous pull. Less than a month later, on November 3, 2016, Jagex attempted to separate all three armors to see if any of them would grab a 75% threshold. None did. Elder armor ended with 67.1% yes threshold, Kodai robes with 66.3% yes threshold, and Twisted armor with a 66.9% Threshold. It is important to note that in this third pull, the ancestral robes were also pulled, which passed with an 80.1% yes threshold. Anyways, guys, this is going to complete yet another video the top 5 updates to never pass pull part 2. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the subscription button down below. Also, come hang out with me in my clan chat and game, Mac underscore H. If you guys have any future top 5 suggestions, leave them down below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon with another video. Take care. Bye.